What's up, fight fans and shitheads? Andrew the Assassin Watson. It's your boy Wilson. And Bobby Adams. God, I hate listening to shit from like when we first began. Like I know there's times, especially now, uh, where I come up and I might be tired for that time from work so much and shit. I might be a little flat, you know what I mean? Like talking, but by the end of the show I pick it up. But you are now listening to Cage and the Gay with Andrew Watson. Well we always can Andrew remix it Wilson. and and do another and fucking I hate listening to the end of that dude I really do oh we, oh, we gotta change it we gotta change it big time soon um I, I was thinking about it and I really now that we have you know, almost a full year under us we got different clips we can add in there you know what I mean right, make right. it a little more entertaining uh but yeah that's that, that's what I want to do I want to make a, a new intro man well don't talk about it be about it fuck you about it um <laughs> This week we are going to recap the Love to Hate event that me and Bobby went and live broadcasted from last night. Uh, if you were able to listen in on that event, or even if you just like you know you went to the event or just paid attention, uh, call in today three one three eight seven nine five zero five nine. We have one simple question: Who won the main event of last night? And with that one simple question, Bobby has he has a T-shirt to give away: the Love to Hate. Uh, you know, the, the memory and loving memory of Dom O'Grady EVE shirt sold out very quick last night before the first couple of fights were over. Yep. Phil Davey announced, you know, that they were all out and they had made a shit ton of shirts and they were all gone. And it was apparent because uh, there was a lot of people walking around with these shirts on last night. Yeah, and it was a good cause. I mean, they had over half the proceeds went to um, Evelyn. Evelyn, the trust fund. Uh, all the proceeds for the fight itself went to Evelyn. So this whole show was all for a great cause, and uh, you know I figured you know what we'll, we'll, we'll buy a shirt. I'll give it away free on air. If not, I guess I got myself a shirt. I, I bought a shirt myself, and Bobby even said that he's like, "Well, you're not gonna give your shirt away." I said, "Fuck no, fuck. This is my T-shirt." Um, but other than that, we're also gonna you know uh, cover. Uh, you know, later uh, I want to get to a couple of the fights from TXC. TXC uh, with Joe Patalia announced some amazing matchups within the last week or so that we haven't really been able to cover and get to. So I want to talk about a couple of those. Um, and then uh, our special guest of the week, thanks to our PR, Bobby. Uh, it's going to be uh, Callie the Honey Badger Cutler. The number one pound for pound. I thought it was just in the 115 no, division. And one Bobby put me in my fucking place. Uh, number one pound for pound female fighter in Michigan ranked by Tapology. Yeah, number one ranked pound for pound female in the state. Not just in 115. Uh, we'll be, we'll, she'll be out with us. Uh, she's calling all the way in from uh, TriStar up in Canada. Yeah, I believe she's in TriStar right now. I believe so. Um, okay, y'all. Uh, um, the decoder just started. Oh, no. Yeah, because it had jumped off air, but it's back on air, so I just want you guys to repeat the t-shirt situation. <clears throat> Alright, anyway, it's my fans, Shaheds, Andrew, and Sass Watson, well, your boy Wilson, and Bobby Adams. <laughs> no, um, if you guys are tuning in, you know, didn't hear what we had to say, uh, what we said is we're, we're going over, uh, today we're going to be recapping the event. We live broadcast last night from the Love to Hate event with uh, Donald Grady. Um, for Dom O'Grady, all the pro proceeds going to a trust fund for his daughter Evelyn, um, and EVE produced a shirt for this event with most of the proceeds from the t-shirts being sold themselves, um, going towards the trust fund as well. But what happened was that they, you know, as soon as we got there, me and Bobby both picked out a shirt, bought them, got them. Bobby's ideal and, and intentionally from the get-go was I'm going to give away one of these shirts. Then comes a B within the first couple of fights, Phil Davy announces that these shirts are now sold out. So Bobby has, you know, I mean, the last, you know, Dom o in loving memory of Dom O'Grady EVE shirt. And he has a question for the fans today. It's one simple question. Because we've done something like this in the past. And nobody ever called in. Tickets for TFC Fight Zone and nobody called in. Um, I've got a large shirt here for the Dom O'Grady and Loving Memory Memorial shirt. All the simple question is, who won last night's main event? At the love to hate. At the love to hate. 
The number is 313-879-5059. Once again, the number is 313-879-5059. And that's sexual chocolate right there. Oh, yeah, that was actually <laughs> very smooth. I was like, where the fuck Wilson go? Yeah. No, no, but, yeah, that's one simple question. Who won the main event from the Love to Hate event last night? Should I tell them who the, who the main event was? I guess. I mean, but then it'd be way too easy for people to go just like Facebook these people. Like, right, oh. we, they, they don't get it by 11 or so, then we you know we add another hint. But well, here's guys the thing. call in. If, I don't think we should take any calls if once Kelly calls in. Right. Oh, well, afterward, or true that, true. So you guys, you guys basically, basically have until 11 o'clock to call in last night, and then this is, you know, this is for people uh, to, to see if people are paying attention to our show. Because we live, yeah, because we live broadcast last night to make sure people are paying attention to Michigan MMA as a whole uh, and things of that nature. But yeah, one simple question: Who won the main event last night at the Love to Hate event, uh, the memorial event for Dom O'Grady? Uh, if you get that question correct, you call and get that question correct: three one three eight seven nine five zero five nine. You get a large EVE uh, in loving memory of Dom O'Grady memorial shirt. And they're all sold out. It's a hot commodity. There's no more of them. I'm wearing one. I'm selfish. I kept mine. <laughs> uh, and if you know one of you guys uh, don't call in by eleven o'clock, then Bobby's probably gonna keep his. That's right. So I've, I've got uh, two posters of Dan Severn. Yeah, two. yeah. He. I've got one. He tried to give away posters of Dan, the signed autograph Dan Severn posters before. That was when we were first kind of getting started and shit. Now we're well, now we're a little bit more established and we still can't get callers. What the hell? That's fine. Yeah, play. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna go over the love to hate event, which was actually man. For the a lot of time that they put had to you know get that show together to make sure that they had the maximum amount you know of uh, profit out of that show. Um, it was actually a well put together show. Um, couple mitch matches. But the fights, you know, everybody came out there and fought. Everybody came out there to, you know, fucking scrap, and it was great. A lot of finishes. We got out of there, you know, in a decent time. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, it was a gr good event. And uh, we're going to go over a couple of the fights here in a minute. And then we're going to get to Kelly, the honey badger cutler. She's going to be calling in with us. Not sure where she, if she's in TriStar yet or not, but we know she's heading out that way to get ready uh, for her upcoming fight. She's going to go out there for six weeks, but she's going to call in today and uh, do an interview with us. Um, talk about, you know, basically what got her started in MMA and where she plans on going from here. She's the number one ranked pound-for-pound pound Michigan uh, professional fighter. Female professional fighter. Okay. <laughs> um, but before we get started, how was everybody's week? It was good. Um, number one, I would like to say happy belated birthday to my son Brandon. You forgot about him? No, I, I didn't say it. I didn't say it last week, but you know, I, I threw it on there on Facebook Tuesday, and you know, we got him his his, his little gift that he wanted the video game, and uh, you get took him? him out to eat uh, Super Smash Bros. For the Wii, you, you? yeah. So. Um, got that, like I said, you know, had a nice little outing yesterday, which is why I missed the event, but, um, you know, it's a family situation. Um, but other than that, you know. We're family too, though. That, that's true, that's true, that's true. He's like, nah, dog, you're white. <laughs> you're my white family. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Brandon. Uh, he, that is the one that came over at my house. No, right? that was Day Day. Brandon okay. was the one with the braids. When you and your girl dropped oh, me off, okay, the event. yeah, yeah. they're uh, out playing the video games yeah. and letting the doggy go to the bathroom. Okay, um, well, happy birthday, Brandon. All right, all right. From your white family, he's like, <laughs> he's like, Dad, hey, you may, that may be your white family, Dad, but that's not my white family. <laughs> um, Bobby, how was your week? Um, uh, let's see, I spent like five hundred bucks on the car. Oh, okay. what happened? Um, remember when I told you that? I remember, forgot to unplug the battery last week. Right. Remember I said the battery light came on, but I should be good. Right. And, well, me and Andrew were driving home, and like, uh, the, bat the car's going to die our whole way home. Oh, the whole way home, the battery was like, Ding. Yeah, the battery light was, light was on the whole way. I get to my house. I live at 8 and Gratiot. I get to the turn around 8 Mile, and it dies. Wow. I get it to start back up, drive home, pull into the driveway, turn it off, couldn't get it to cut back on. So I let it, let it sit. 
and then it came back up. Okay. Went to go drive up the auto zone to have them test everything, and I died. Went on eight mile, uh, not eight mile, went on crash it, died. So I turned around, got out of getting able to coast onto a side street, had my buddy bike come jump me, put out a battery charger, let it charge all night, went to go start it. It turned on, but none of the lights worked. None of the, the dash lights, the speedometer, nothing. The, the, the whole gas light, yeah, gas thing didn't work. So I turned it off, went to go turn it back on, nothing. Shit. So Monday morning, I just went back to bed. I was like, screw it, I'll, I'll chuck this one as a loss. <laughs> right. Drove it up there, the guy's like, oh yeah, it's just a battery. I'm like, oh cool. I'll drive back home and I'll take the battery off and I'll get a new battery. Simple as that. Put the battery on, battery light's still doing it. Battery's dead. Shit. So I took it to the auto zone closer to my house. And she's like, yeah, you need to take the alternator off to get this tested. I'm like, son of a bitch. So I'm calling people, texting people, trying to get tools, because I have no tools. <laughs> Nope, everybody's at work. I was like, Dad, I need your help, need your tools. He's like, yeah, it's too cold. <laughs> He's like, I got a buddy who has a shop. I'm like, I'm not fucking paying somebody to do this. I was like, I'll just fucking YouTube it. YouTube, it was like fucking five bolts total. Okay. So I went on there and uh, walked my ass all the way back up to fucking AutoZone in the fucking freezing cold. Got all the tools, spent fucking like 75 bucks on that. Came back home, pulled down that off. Alternator was like 150. I already spent money on the battery. I'm like, son of a bitch. But now it's all good. All right. And then I ate the fuck out of a part today. What? Oh man, I didn't tighten it down enough. The whole fucking machine was shaking. Ooh. <laughs> okay, okay. What's funny is I drove by Bobby's house Monday morning, uh, approximately six seven in the morning. And I kind of look over and I see his car, and I'm like. Oh, you know, it's an okay day. Maybe, you know, his right. job is one of the jobs that, you know, still recognize it and give the, you know, give everybody the day off. So I'm thinking, like, okay. And, uh, I'm like, fucking lucky. And then, throughout the day, Taylor goes, because he lives one block away from her parents. So she's going back over her parents' house, and she calls, and she's like, I don't think Bobby had the day off because that's a pay day. I was like, why do you say that? She's like, well, because i seen him walking down the street. Uh, his street, I think, it, I don't know if his car was. I seen him pick him up. Hold on, I, I said something along the line. I'm like, well, did you stop and ask if he needed help or anything? No, I just kept driving. <laughs> oh! Like, what the fuck? Shame on you. And she's like, ah, I just kept driving. I was like, oh. Well, I knew there was a reason why I didn't like her. <laughs> Couldn't even stop and say, hey, you know, AutoZone's right on the block. You can, like, at least take him there, you know what I mean, real quick or something. But I was like, what the hell? Uh, but on my week, man, uh, no MLK day for me. Um, I don't think my bosses are racist, but they don't have any black people that work with us, so they ain't going to give anybody a day on <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, other than that, man, just, just being back to work. It's been great, you know what I mean? I had the couple weeks where we were laid off and shit like that due to the holidays and things like that, but uh, just working full time. Uh, been training a new guy to get, you know, used to all of our equipment that we use. And You got a whole way working with you, don't you? No, I did. Uh, I had a, had a couple guys that I, you know, was quite, you know, I had my brother working me for a little while and then I had one of my good friends working me for a little while. And, uh, both of them guys we had to let go. My brother, uh, we didn't really have to let him go, more or less. Uh, he kind of like just freaked out and then, you know what I mean, he was yelling and shit. So we're like, whatever. The boss is like, if you, you know, if that's how you want to be, then you just leave and not come back. Now, the other guy, my buddy, he just fucking no called, no showed whenever the fuck he wanted. Uh, that's uh, why I do not give people jobs. Oh no, my boss was even like, well, we need to hire a couple new guys. You know anybody? Fuck yeah, I do, but fuck no, I ain't telling nobody <laughs> else to come on in here. If I if I can absolutely, like, I've worked with Bobby before, you know what I mean? If Bobby ever, something happened where he fucked so many parts up that they're just like, get the fuck out of our factory, <laughs> man. Um, I would definitely get him a job because, you know what I mean, I've worked, I've gotten Bobby a job before and it worked out. He's you know, reliable. He's a very reliable <laughs> person. But uh, most people, man, you think, you know, they're reliable. You think, you know, they're, they'll fucking have your back because they're a friend. 
And sooner or later, you know, it's their attitude is just like, ah, you know, I just don't feel like working today, so I'm not going to come in. It's yeah, like, out, of, out of all the people I know, it's maybe one or two that I would look out for. That's why I tell my boss, man, that my exact word to the boss is, you don't need, because his thing is, I, I need to find people that want to work. It's like, no, 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 Joe. Find people that need to work. Need to fucking work, you know what I mean? Like young guys with families, shit like that. You gotta find a man that has the need to work. Because just because somebody wants to work, how long are they gonna wanna work for? They're gonna wake up one day and be like, I don't wanna work today. And you're gonna get no call, no shows. So it's not the guys that want. Fuck those guys. Exactly. It's the guys that need to. It's an absolutely need. They can't have a day off. I hate you. So, I mean, even with me and all my medical issues and shit like that, man, I've worked every single day. I've gone to the doctor either before work or, you know, after work. So, you know, if I go before work, still make it in. If I go, like, you know, later in the day, I make sure I leave work as late as possible. Right. You know, I, I fractured my hand at work and, kept, you know what I mean, worked through it with a, uh, a soft cast on last year for four weeks when I fractured my hand at the same job. So, it's just, you know, having reliable guys to work around. But other than that, uh... My week's been pretty great. I'm trying. I was trying to think of something. There was something. Well, the same thing as last week. There was something good in the back of my mind leading up to when I wanted to talk about it, and then it just fucking disappeared. <laughs> uh, no, I also I want to say thanks for uh, Roger from uh, Sports Radio Detroit for coming out last night and uh, running our boards for us. Oh, he came out. Yeah, okay, he, he, cool. he came out and uh, he was our engineer for the night. And Appreciate he, that. Yeah, he really liked it, man. And, uh, you know, it's he's gonna help us with our our uh, our. Are promoting ourselves, our social medias and things like that. So, because our Twitter page fucking sucks. And uh, <laughs> he was showing me some cool things last night, man. Uh, with the Twitter, he's sitting there like recording, like not recording, but like live streaming fights on Twitter. Uh, Periscope. Periscope, and it was blowing the fuck up. Okay. And one minute, one of the fights had like you know fifty viewers on this one fight. I was like, what the hell? All right, all right, we're moving on. I told you we need to get that. I'm gonna get that George Jefferson cute part. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, you know, let's uh, let's cover this event a little bit before we have to, you know, get in with Kelly Cutler. Um, Once again, y'all, we have that contest. We're giving out that shirt. We won the main event. Phone don't, number. Don't you fucking call in after we cover it. Yeah, don't you call in after <laughs> we cover it uh, at all. I will be so pissed. 313-879-5059. And here's, here, here, if you want, if you guys want one hint of... You know what I mean? Who of one of the fighters were last night uh, in the main event? Uh, me and Dean Walsh dropped down to 145. He's been fighting there on and off 155, 145 for quite some time. He was at 145 last night. And, you know, uh, who, who did he fight? And what was the outcome of that? All right. So that's all we want 313 879 50 59. Call on. Free t shirt. Everybody loves free shit. Really? There we go. The show is making progress. <laughs> uh, but last night, for the love to hate the event, man, it was a right off rip. It, it got going. Uh, Nathan Long, the nine finger nightmare, uh, tragic car accident victim because his, his woman pushed him out in front of a car after an event years ago. Uh, you got the access to like the internet and the Google right now. Google it. I don't want to fuck it up. You don't know how to do it. I uh, mean, I can, but I don't, I don't want to click the wrong right, shit and lose the wrong shit. Thing. You know, leave your fucking fingers off of shit there. <laughs> <laughs> leave all ten of your fingers. This kid has nine. Leave your tenth one off the board. Um, but no, he uh, a couple years ago, he was at an event. Uh, him and his girlfriend at the time start arguing at, outside of the event, and the broad decides to push him out in traffic. Ooh. Nathan Long was then hospitalized and in a coma for quite some time. Uh, was supposedly never supposed to fight again. Um, and has since, you know what I mean, made a full recovery, got cleared by the doctors, blah, 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 was supposed to make the jump to pro. I know that a couple months ago I seen him saying something about was supposed to go to uh, the UK and fight for an organization over there, uh, but never got the funds. He tried to start, you know, get sponsors to help him pay to get over there and everything, fight, blah, blah, Obviously he didn't come to fruition. He didn't go over there and fight, still fighting amateur. He, uh, even on his own Facebook, I seen it. Um, 
he had over 67 fights, about 67 uh, amateur fights. Damn. And fought a 5-0 and o Justin Botman. He fought the scrappy Justin Botman. All right. Um, and that fight didn't end the way Nathan probably expected it to. Nathan uh, comes out. They start the fight. Uh, Nathan, they go to the ground, and Nathan sinks in uh, a triangle, an arm bar. He had uh, a guillotine, right? A guillotine? Didn't he have a good guillotine type? Yeah, guillotine. A guillotine and a arm bar. Uh, very tight in on, you know, uh, Justin. And the kid fucking proves and why, you know what I mean, he has the nickname Scrappy Justin Botman. Um, because... He, you know, withstained, you know, the submissions. And Justin Botman landed some beautiful ground and pound. And at one minute, almost looked like he had Nathan completely, like, uh, out of it. On the ground, just laying there. Nathan looked like he might have been out for a quick second. Uh, it was landing heavy, heavy punches, man. And uh, ended up walking away with, uh, you know, the victory. Justin Botman moving to 6-0 now. Um, I'm, I'm pulling, hold on guys, I want to <laughs> pull up this fucking thing about, uh... Did we, hold on! Did this woman go to jail for attempted murder? That's what I want to pull up, uh... He was, I want to pull up this fucking article just so people around Michigan better understand who he is. He, and he's like one of the, I don't want to say laugh, he kind of is, but he's more of like laughing stock in the state of Michigan... For like you know people who take MMA serious, the guys who all take MMA serious. Now why would he be? Why is he considered the laughing stock? Because the the fact that he has over sixty seven fights, hasn't gone pro. Uh, I think he has like a five hundred record. You know what I mean? Like kind of even. Um, in you know that scenario, you get hit by a car outside of a fucking event because your girlfriend pushes you in fucking in front of a car. Like who? Uh uh. Which finger did he move? <laughs> I don't even know if the finger he lost was because of the car accident, though. He had the nickname the Nine Finger Nightmare before that. Oh, okay, okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. That's not him. Do the same. Drunk, <laughs> drunk driver killer Nathan Long jail after killing a couple of people. That's not him. He almost died himself. Uh, it's right here. It says uh, Nine Finger Nightmare. Long to make a miracle return. Um, we'll pull up the article. He, it's a funny situation. I've never heard of it before. And the way, uh, the way he, he's okay. Here's another reason why he's more of a laughing stock uh, in the world of Michigan MMA. Uh, him and this other guy showed up for an event here in Michigan to fight each other. Got their hands wrapped. Both these guys were getting ready to fight. Well, by the time they called their fight, neither guy is in the building. Both guys left said building with their hands wrapped, and both guys later that day or the following day had different descriptions of how both of them won said fight. Neither of them fought, <laughs> and both guys that later that day had made Facebook posts about how they won that fight. We talked about this yes. before, and this is that kid. We talked. I was. I yeah. I talked about this situation before. I never really said a name. Well, it was Nathan Long. Hmm. Nathan Long, uh, yeah, walked into an event, got his hands wrapped, got ready for a fight. And Bobby, was... we gotta get that interview. What? With the nine finger dude. The <laughs> nine finger dude. I got a, you got, I got a question. <laughs> <laughs> I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> I, I got questions for that goat. You ever watched the interview? No. You ever seen the fucking oh, interview? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen the interview. Where they're talking about, uh, what'd they say? Somebody's fucking, uh, somebody's fucking, oh, George, uh, George Clooney's fucking sheep. He's like, oh, I gotta get that interview, and you know, he's like, I got questions for that goat. I thought he was talking about George Clooney, you know what I mean? Like he wanted to interview George Clooney. No, he wanted to interview the goat. It was James Franco. He's a news anchor. And yeah, I saw, I saw it. I saw it. But uh, that's how that's how I feel in that situation. Like I got questions for that goat. But uh, yeah, he he just he's one of them kids that, uh, especially years ago, man. Thought of himself as the best fighter around, and nobody else thought of the same thing. Like, nobody else thought, yes, you are the best fighter around. So, it says, on, on June 20th, 2011, Michigan MMA fighter Nathan Long, uh, the Nine Finger Nightmare, uh, 13 and 6 at the time, was pushed in front of a speeding car by his ex fiance 
Long was, I'm sorry, I giggled at that, you guys. Long was immediately sent to the nearest hospital where he spent three consecutive weeks in a coma. After waking up from his coma, Long was told he'd never fight again. He decided to beat odds and wasted no time to teach himself how to walk again. Just seven months later, Long is now training at his gym in preparation for a 125 title fight. He is scheduled to make his epic return against uh, Antonio Wiseman on February 14, 2012 at, for Stay Tuned MMA in Niles, Michigan. We had the pleasure of speaking with the Nine Finger Nightmare as we told us. Yes, I'm very lucky. Everyone calls me the hero fighter of God because I healed faster than any other patient in my case here in Michigan. I'm a hero of a lot of people and really opened up a lot of people's eyes on how fast your life can be taken away. However, I wasn't going to give up anytime soon. Even when I was in a coma, I was in a dream and someone told me to never give up. They told me to believe and I would always win. Just believing in all I did, or yeah, in all I did and pushed myself. Here I am eight months later, making my return to the cage since my accident. In my return to fight, I'm fighting for a 125 title belt. I'm going on my third title in my 20th fight of my career as an amateur fighter. And then they have a whole video here of like the interview I actually had. Well, I gotta give my man props to, to bounce back from a, a, a life altering accident and to, to continue his dream, man. All right. Hey, if you listening, man, you call in because I do have some questions for you, but. <laughs> Um, but no, Botman fucking proved why he's the scrappy Justin Botman, man, and went out there and got put in some dangerous, you know, situations early and weathered the storm, man, and took took that victory home with him. My heck was off to Justin Botman. I know you're probably fucking hungover shit, not even awake yet. <laughs> uh, Botman. How do you finish it? Uh, ground pound. Yeah, ground pound first round. Yeah. Well. Oh, and he was laying, dude, it, it was, it was nice. It was really, really nice. At one point. the 6 and 0. Oh. Yeah, who was a six and zero? Oh, uh, came up to me last night and said, "I got a dilemma now." And I was like, uh, "What's that?" He goes, "Well, uh, you know, the, the Da Fiero event, you know, at the Pal or at the Joe's Arena, the Impact Fight League, is was supposed to happen in, Mar in March. And I was supposed to fight for the one twenty five title for them. Well, they moved it to April 9th, and I already had the Ron DeLeon title set up for that same day." So he's like, what do I do now? And I was like, whatever one makes more sense to you. Which do you think is the best career move? Impact Fight League. Whichever one you kind of committed to first, which would be Impact Fight League for the simple fact they had an earlier date. Well, I just told you he was at the job. How many times does he get to fight the Joe in his career? Right, in his career, yeah. You don't get to fight the Joe every day. You know what I mean? And they don't throw a lot. <laughs> Don Frio doesn't throw a lot. That's now the second show that got pushed back, though, not a sanctionable. Um, we know TFC, they moved their event back to better accommodate their fighters for sanctioning a lot of, well, a little bit more time for fighters to get prepared for the sanction coming up. And uh, the Impact Fight League, I seen it was because of conflict of uh, scheduling with the Red Wings. The Red Wings had uh, something they didn't realize they had scheduled that day for, for an event, you know, there at the show, so they had to move the day. Um, but yeah, Botman, I, I, I'd fight at the Joe, man. The last time we were there, it's a pretty impressive crowd. Big, you know, big arena. And this guy had panic attacks. I had, boom! <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, the pyrotechnics, man, they're fucking loud. The show, oh, okay. they went the fuck off. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, they yeah. The fuck <laughs> me, uh, Especially that first one when you're not expecting it. Oh, dude, that's I, I thought I was going to die. I literally was like, ah, get me out of here, I'm going to die. Uh, <laughs> next fight of the night was Aaron Fellin, uh versus Keaton Gatzer. Um Keaton training out of uh, the hate squad, or, you know, that's who was in his corner last night. Uh, these guys went out there, man. Uh, Aaron Fellin was landing some nice punches, but kind of really stiff in yeah, movement. Yeah, he was very, very, very stiff. Um, Keaton... He was fighting out of his own gym. Yeah, his own gym. He's at a split quickly. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, he's uh he was like one on one before the night. Now he's one and two, but yeah, somehow was on his fight team. But uh, he kind of reminded me of like a small version of Tom Hardy from Warrior. Like a really, you know, kind of looked like that. But, yeah, uh, went out there. It was a great, you know, striking. You know, right away, Keaton even landed some nice knees to the head. Uh, 
these guys went out there and Keaton, uh, you know, banged for a little bit, went to the ground. Keaton uh, was able to walk away with his arm and got the arm bar in the first round, moving to three and one in his career. And, uh, you know, Aaron Fellon falling one more loss behind, moving to one and two. We'll see him outside later after his fight. He was just sitting there and, you know, smoke a cigarette and talking about, well, you know, I can't, you know, I need to start serious training, blah, blah, my cardio, this, that, you know. I could have kept going. I was like, well, look what you're fucking doing. Yeah, I was to say, because he's smoking a square after a fight. My exact words was like, I said, you're, uh, you're smoking a cigarette. You're complaining that you, you didn't have anything to take. I said, you think maybe you should trade for fights. He said, well, only had two weeks. I was like, well, next time, if you really think you want to keep fighting, dude, take a serious next time. You might win a fucking fight. Mm. Um, people don't realize, man, I will take a guy... You know, a guy that has never fought a day in his life, but has been training for two weeks over that tough guy on the street that, oh, I beat anybody's ass. He's got a couple, you know, good street fights that people have seen him beat some ass or I'll take that guy you never seen fight with two weeks of experience over that guy who fucking no training experience but thinks he's a badass in the street. You know what I mean? I see. I see. Um, training makes a big difference. It really does. Next fight of the night, uh, Terrell Kelly did not show up. Uh, Dominic Larico, he was from uh, Hate Squad, really good friends with Donald Grady. Uh, made, you know, came back out of a hiatus just for this event for Don, wanted to fight in the name of Don. Terrell Kelly did not show up to the event. Um, I believe he is an AFC fighter. Yeah, him and uh, Kyle Brockett. Kyle Brockett, they're both supposedly teammates. Uh, so neither one of these guys. I need to believe that they fight for the AFC, and uh, neither of these guys showed up. I mean, I don't... I, but I don't, their coach was there doing security. I don't know if she's their coach or if she's just a part of the team, but here's my thing. Um, you guys agreed to fight for this event. This event is for a, a, a great cause. It's just not. It was a memorial event for a Michigan MMA legend. You guys make yourself look so much more dumber now. Here's the thing: is these two guys, especially with the the the, the history that Kyla has in the past of being unsportsman as fuck, need to be blacklisted. All these guys that no call, you know, no don't show up to the fights. You're like need to be fucking blacklisted. The George Mains, basically AFC's gym, almost. Now, with the, with the sanctioning happening, what happens to the guy that pulls out the fight? With? Nothing. No, I mean, they look like I mean, fucking dicks. I mean, shouldn't they have at least a sensible reason versus this I'm one, not this ready? One, this My one, vagina hurts. This today. hopefully gets rid of all that shit because you've got to pay. You gotta pay to get okay. your license. Yeah. So you gotta pay to get your license, you gotta pay to get your blood test, you gotta pay to get your physicals. Most guys they just wake up in the morning and their vaginas don't feel the right way. They might got a yeast infection or something, they're like, oh I don't wanna fight now. Right. It's just bitch made shit. You wake up and realize you ain't got what it takes to step in the fucking cage, because no matter if you're stepping in there with a guy that's 0 and 0 or 10 and 0, it takes fucking balls to lock your side. I, I, I give that to Street, you guys. Street fights are bar fights. You, sometimes, you know, it's not really most time expected. You're at the bar, some shit gets here, bam, you know, shit, shit happens. Shit happens. happens. This is fucking Whether walk. you can fight or not. Yeah. <laughs> this is shit. This is you, will, you walking in the cage and staring a motherfucker down across from you and knowing, hey, we're about to fucking fight. Yeah, it, it, like I said, I got a lot of respect, win or lose, for anybody who steps in that ring. And if you agree to step in that ring, whether, I mean, granted, this was one hell of a cause or just uh, uh, an event, period, you know, show up, fight, man. Yeah, but that's the thing is, if it was just an event, I would still have something to say about it. I agree, because you the, agreed to the fight. It's a fact now. Yeah, you don't, you don't pull out of a fight that day. Yeah, it, right. it's, it's a fact now that it was a memorial event for Donald Grady. Uh, you know what I mean? All eyes kind of were on this event. You know what I mean? And here in the Michigan MMA community, and now you look like an asshole, Terrell Kelly. All right. Um, next next fight of the night. You only get one chance to make a first impression. And my own first impression of Terrell Kelly. I've never met the man. Don't know who he is. Don't know what he looks like. Now I don't fucking care to know him. Now I don't care to know if you look like an asshole. You know what's funny is that you know talking about first impressions. You know, Justin Botman does not look like your typical like badass one twenty five or. You know what I mean? The man shouldn't even fight at 125. No, That's he shouldn't. The thing. But, you I know, bet you he waited with all his clothes on again. <laughs> you should have asked him that. One, one thing that I can say is that since I've very see, first seen him fight, even though he's not like everybody's top, you know, 125 in the state, not a lot of people even really know who he is yet, his impression has really lasted with him. And a lot of other guys have that, you know what I mean? There's guys that, you know, it, it, you even like now, Wilson, where you go to bed, oh, is that, you know, and they leave impressions. That, Terrell Kelly, you just left an impression on me that you're a fucking asshole. 
Uh, next fight of the night was uh, Michael Monaco. He was zero and zero, making his debut against uh, one and zero Jamie Dale. Jamie Dale, we seen fight at Masters of Combat. Um, walking away from that event with a TKO. This event, you can tell he had no time to get ready because uh, he looked a little sloppy in it, you know the the condition, the shape he was in. Yeah, he didn't look as in good a shape as he did when he was at Masters. Uh, and then there was times where he would throw a punch and kind of like. I don't know if he was trying to dab like, uh, or what, but he was he was dipping the fuck out, man, and it was weird, it causing him to slip and fall. Uh, yeah, that, there was quite a few slip and falls. Yeah, what, Botman and Nate Long both slipped and fell. Oh, and look at for a second that uh, Botman slipped and like his foot went to the cage and, and like he circled away from the cage and started grabbing at his toe. Remember, he kind of stood there and grabbed it. I thought he might have fucking broke his toe. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you'll see that fighters' fucking toes look right out their fucking skin. Um, so they don't wipe down the ring. It's, 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 it's a it's material. It's a material in like it's a canvas. You know what I mean? Right. And, and sometimes if it gets a little sweaty, or you're you're in there. Yeah, like, I mean if it's coming from us. Yeah. You know, in, in the but fight, yeah, they, 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 they they you know they clean up during every fight and shit like that. But yeah, they, there was some slips, but Jamie uh, Jamie did not was not able to implement any game plan whatsoever, and from the the beginning bell until they finally stopped the fucking fight. Um. Monaco had the fight, took a second round TKO. Uh, you know, congratulations getting your first win. Next fight of the night was Jeff Botman, 6 and 4 versus Owen O. Joey Geneva, a uh, fight that I personally didn't like seeing put together. I, uh, Who they beat fight? Owen O? Yeah, against the 6 and 4 guy. And I, 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 uh, I expressed my displeasure with Joey uh, leading up to the fight. I told him, you know, don't pull off this fight card. I'm not about, you know what I mean? Don't do that. I'm not telling you to pull off this fight card. What I'm telling you is in the future, don't fucking do this again. Oh, you spoke to him before yeah. the fight? Yeah. Okay. Don't do this again. Um, this isn't something you should be doing. Oh, I'm trying to get my name out here, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're getting advice from the wrong fucking people about how to get your name out there because whoever told you that an 0 0 guy should fight a 6 and 4 guy to get his fucking name out there, yeah, you're going to get your name out there by the guy that just got fucking beat quickly by a 6 and 4 guy. What gym is he from? Uh, he's, he's, he just finally started training. Uh, he trained for like one week leading up to this fight. But he's training with Namo and James Holloway and Victor Anquinino and uh, Brian Pat. So he's actually in the gym now. Uh, you know, he only trained for like a week or so leading up to this fight. But it's the thing is that, you know, with this fight being put together in such short notice, he didn't have all the time. But uh, walked out there and... Uh, Fucking A, he went for a ride. Uh, that was a huge slam. Right off rip, uh, he goes out there and tries to, like, you know, feel him out for a split second. Jeff, uh, Joey tries to feel out Jeff. Jeff picks him up in the air for a fucking hell of a ride and just slams him. Uh, transitions any which way he wants. Got full mount. Uh, tried to sink in submissions, sink in submissions, and just... Uh, Man, he pounded on Joey for quite some time, and Bob, there was a point even Bobby looked up and was like, "All right, stop the fucking fight already." <laughs> okay. Um, and we were, you know, cage side right there, so I'm pretty sure that the, whoever was roughing at that time heard him because he was like, "All right, it's time to stop the fucking fight already." Um, did he? Yeah. At that moment, he actually did. I'm, I, you know, I mean, Joey, you got fucking heart, kid. If you know, but don't do that shit no more. Now you're owing one. You're going backwards, and you're not going to get that right recognition. You think, oh, when you, when you want to ask people to get on their fight cards, Owen One's going to be that right impression. Get your name out there is what you want to do. Well, he got his name on our show. So. Take, take, <laughs> well, I, I, I've known Joey for a little bit of time. I, you know, I mean, uh, he fought for Masters of Combat in a boxing match um, and shit like that. And I've been trying to help him get give him good advice. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not. That's one thing that once sanctioning goes through and shit like that, I want to see all the steps and processes of like becoming a manager. Or, you know, shit like that, because one thing that I can actually help guys out with a lot is how not to fucking do your career, because in the beginning of my career, I took it fucking just like most of these other guys did. I wasn't very serious. Um, Bobby's actually the one that, you know, helped me get more serious about what I wanted to do with fighting and everything else like that. But you can put somebody, both of y'all, y'all can, can sit in the ring and, and, and spar and can tell if a guy is ready. Yeah. So, but, you know, I want to help guys out. I want to make sure that they don't, because some of these guys got, you know, kind of half-assed gyms that, you know, tell them to take stupid fights. It's, I, you know, I, I, Joey, don't do it again. Take your next fight needs to be against a guy that's either 1-on-1 or 0-1-1 or, you know, 0-2. Well, Victor Anquinito was on his Facebook and said, you know, 
don't 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 beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up a little loss. You know, we'll get you in the gym more. And next time we're gonna get you a guy who's more evenly matched at your skill set. Uh, what? <laughs> did, did I get picked up on the mic? Oh, I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. But what? I farted, you guys. It was like but what? The little stonogram thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's that high pitch. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, Jeff Bobman taking the TKO in the first round. Next fight of the night, um, 10 and 13, Derek Reyes against uh, Shaquille Turner out of Team uh, 8 Squad. And uh, a lot of people, you know, me and Bobby were talking last night, oh, 10 and 13, 26 fights, the guy's only got five fights. Well, Shaquille is 4 and 1, it's a big difference than uh, Derek Reyes is 10 and 13. Why? Because quality the, fights. The quality but, fights okay. and quality in the fights that uh, Shaquille is actually Shaquille took. was trained by Donald Grady. Now, McGrady knew he was a legit coach from a legit team. So these guys take fights that actually help their fighters progress. Derek Reyes has no legit team. Uh, he's that guy that will show up for a week leading up to his fight. Uh, he used to show up at our gym four aces all the time with like a week or so leading up to his fight. Get, you know, get a sparring in for about a week and then go fight. Um, Shaquai is a different, you know, breed of fighter. He's like, he takes it a little more serious. He's taken his career more serious. He's had more legitimate fights. Uh, some of the fights with Derek, you know what I mean? He he's he fights a lot of guys with almost the same record. He's he's always put up with guys with uh, sub five hundred records. And when he gets put up against the good guys, it shows. Like it did last night. Uh, TKO a minute forty four seconds in round one. Shaquai won by. Whoa. So uh, Derek had no answer for Shaquai and. Yeah, Shaquille walked away with that victory. Okay. Um, next fight of the night was DJ Lane versus Russell Campbell. Uh, Russell Campbell, we fought before. I heard that name. Heard he fought, we've before. seen him at both the WXC events. Okay, okay. I think I know. It's Andrew's favorite person. Ah, <laughs> all right, now I know. Now I know. Okay. Um, DJ, I forget what they said his record was, but Russell's now 33-30, and 30, uh, moving 34-30 and 30 last night. Um, they came out, man. Uh, he stuck DJ in a deep, you know, triangle. Deep, deep triangle. And uh, He was cutting the angle correctly. He was pulling down on the head. I mean, uh, from what I've seen, it didn't look like there was any room. No. And we were right there. And uh, DJ got out of it. They, uh, you know, they got to... Uh, you know, brawling and everything, but what did Russell got the arm bar? Uh, decision. It was a decision. It went all three rounds. Oh, it did. It did go all three rounds. You're correct. Um, yeah, it went all three rounds. You're right, because we were sitting there trying to think during the event who took what rounds. But yeah, he went took the decision. Afterwards, though, he showed me his hand. And it was fucking swelled up so bad uh, during the towards the end of the fight. He kept holding his hand and shit. Uh, believe, man, especially by the looks of it, he broke his hand. Um, so he'll be out of fighting for quite some time, thankfully. Uh, but you know, we'll see him back around sometime because I mean, hopefully the sanction doesn't push him out of the sport. But uh, it, with a break, break in your hand, that's this is about the time where you're like, hey, am I going to take my you know fight more serious? Am I? They said they announced last night he's going to take one or two more nice fights. Three. Before like he goes, fights. yeah. Before he goes pro, so now it's the time where you're breaking your hand. You're, you know, you're actually putting too much damage on your body as an amateur, and it's like, do I, you know, do I just make that transition now, so that you know, what I mean, I'm actually getting paid to hurt myself, <laughs> um, or not? And you fucking assholes, nobody has called in yet, and now we got to cover it, and now Bobby gets to keep his T-shirt. Yep. No, we're going to commercial. No, we can't. We, we, we can't. We, we got. We, we have to box. finish this. All right, card. finish it then. We have to finish this card. And we're going to, we're going to, you know, commercial break. Or we're going to come back with Kelly Cutler. If people don't want to abide by our rules, then you get nothing. Nothing. No more free shit. Actually, <laughs> now you, you got to pay for it. You shit, guys, but. we try to help, we, we try, you know, hook you guys up with sweet shit. Nobody wants to abide by our rules. You know, now I'm going to start to purge. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Um, the last fight of the night was Dean Walsh versus uh, Robert Frattenborough. Last uh, time we talked about Robert Frattenborough was the time that he fought James, uh, Holloway. James Holloway at, at the, the IFL. IFL. Um, and James looked like a man possessed. Uh, 
Fettenberg took a lot of shots in that fight from James. Uh, gave James, you know, a couple shots himself. Showed, you know, that he was capable of, you know, really sticking in there and, you know, gaming it out. Last night, man, Dean Walsh uh, came out there, landed a solid fucking shot. And just like he, you know, we talk about WXC, went straight for the takedown once again. Uh, but to Dean's credit, he kept it on the ground. When he kept it on the ground, he was landing some nice shots on the ground. He was landing some nice shots. He even had uh, positioning, you know, better positioning for quite some time uh, in a scramble. Lost positioning and uh, uh, Frettenborough, uh, fuck, I'm, I didn't even write this down because uh, it ended kind of quickly. Uh, what was the submission that Frettenborough got? It was guillotine? I think it was guillotine. Guillotine? I believe so. Um, quick, too. He kind of tapped uh, quickly. Uh, you know, Frettenborough taking the victory and Bobby taking the shirt home with him, so fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, something I wanted to add about the uh, Mike Monaco and Jamie Dale fight. Yeah. <laughs> Both these guys are hunched over after fight, and Tony looks at us and he yells, "Cardio!" Oh yeah, he looks right. He's like, "Cardio, guys, cardio!" Because it was only the uh, beginning of the second round, and these guys were dead. It was okay. funny. But they were dead at the end of the first round. They're fifty fivers, and neither one of them looked like fifty fivers though. Uh, one fight I do want to take on Kyle Brockett. You know, we we're talking didn't make it from AFC, but Brian uh, Stonehands Jackson was did step up and fight somebody. Uh, his own teammate James Salisbury. Fight started right Whoa, away. Whoa! He fought his own teammate? Yeah, the fight started right away. Uh, shot for a takedown, got put in a guillotine, and tapped out. Sales period did. Um, How do y'all feel about that? Because I know you're dead set against it. I'm still dead set against it, especially when I talked to Salisbury after the fight, and he said, oh, yeah, we basically planned that. Whoever whoever shot for a takedown, or if somebody just grabbed a hold of like an arm or a submission right away, instead of like fighting, we're just going to tap our teammates. We're not trying to get hurt here. He has a, he has a championship belt coming up uh, next weekend for AFC. So he said, "Why am I going to go out there and get hurt tonight when I got something to actually fight for in a couple weeks?" So, but that does it for the love to hate event. Um, memory downgrading, dude. There was so many generous people. There's people walking up, handing out big cash donations, check donations. Uh, there was a guy, Rocky's run for the 2016 president presidential elections on the Democratic ballot. On the Democratic ballot, uh, he walked in there and handed the uh, Donald Gray's wife a, a big chunk of money. And everything like that. I want to pr say thank you to everybody that came out and uh, supported that event, supported Dom, supports Michigan and May community that much. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Roger, for you know running our boards last night. Thank you, Mike Akers, for you know throwing one last event in Dom over his name and allowing us to come there and cover it. But you know, other than that, that's the uh, that's what the hell happened last night. And uh, but I get to keep a shirt, and we're gonna go to a break and come right back in a little bit with Kelly, the Honey Badger cover. All right. Where are you like giggling about, so our... Uh huh? You're like laughing a minute ago. Because he, oh. he sent me uh, Coco. He's like, yeah, Kelly's gonna be ready for the Coco <laughs> He's like, that Coco, I meant JoJo. <laughs> She's gonna be joining Hollywood. What more. the fuck did JoJo mean? You'll never know. I don't want to. Me and your boys. Yeah, boys. Cut your fucking ear. Steelers seen this abuse. 